Well, the question I want to ask us uh, today uh, is this, uh, are you wise? It's a different response than I got this morning at eight. They all laughed, which I'm not sure what, what meant. Um, but I think we'd all agree, isn't it, that to, to be wise is better than to be a fool. Um, but if we're honest with ourselves, we can probably all think of times when we have um, been a fool or done foolish things uh, and maybe continue uh, to do so. Uh, maybe that um, was a relationship choice or a financial decision. Uh, maybe you uh, have been uh, scammed and that was a a foolish uh, thing, but at the time you didn't you didn't realise. Uh, maybe it's something that you said uh, or, or didn't say. Um, are you wise? We're looking at three chapters today: Daniel ten, eleven, and twelve. Um, maybe that's not wise, um, but it does hold together uh, as a, a single revelation. This is one vision, final vision that Daniel uh, receives. Uh, it's all pretty complex, though, uh, said to be the, the hardest and most uh, challenging uh, chapters in the book. Daniel is mourning uh, for three uh, weeks. Uh, he's intentionally seeking the Lord. It's Passover time, so it should be more of a time of rejoicing, uh, but he's mourning, uh, he's fasting three weeks, and he eats no fine food, uh, no meat, and no, no wine, and uh, he uses no Rexona or moisturizer or whatever it is that he might use. Speaks about no lotions, no anointing oil. Then he receives this revelation, receives this vision, uh, and again, like so many of the others, it's, it's full of distress. Uh, it is full of, of trouble. But right throughout, there is also a word of hope. Just a little bit of hope, but it is there. Uh, and it is good. It might only be a little bit, but it is good. At the end, there is this glorious picture for the wise. There is still much darkness to come in the world, but there is this glorious picture of the end for those who are wise. So that is what are we are going to see. And so I want to ask you, are you wise? Are you wise? For if you are wise, it is this glorious picture uh, that awaits you. This is our hope. Um, we're we're going to read it now. We're not going to read all three chapters. I thought that wouldn't be wise. Um, but it would be good for you to read them. So if you haven't already, I encourage you to read 10, 11, and 12. Um, we're just now going to read. anne Marie's going to read uh, for us. Um, we're going to read the start and the end to give us a taste of the whole. love you to turn it up. Uh, if you've got your, your Bible with you. Good morning. My name's Anne Marie Osmond. I'm reading Daniel chapter 10, 1 to 14. And then we'll be reading chapter 11, verses 40, and then all of chapter 12. Daniel chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a revelation was given to Daniel, who was called Belshazzar. Its message was true, and it concerned a great war. The understanding of the message came to him in a vision. At that time, I, Daniel, mourned for three weeks. I ate no choice food, no meat or wine touched my lips, and I used no lotions at all until the three weeks were over. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the bank of the great river, the Tigris, I looked up, and there before me was a man dressed in linen with a belt of fine gold from Euphrates around his waist. His body was like topaz, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze and his voice like the sound of a multitude. 
I, Daniel, was the only one who saw the vision. Those who were with me did not see it, but such terror overwhelmed them that they fled and hid themselves. So I was left alone, gazing at this great vision. I had no strength left. My face turned deathly pale and I was helpless. Then I heard him speaking, and as I listened to him, I fell into a deep sleep, my face to the ground. A hand touched me and set me trembling on my hands and knees. He said, Daniel, you who are highly esteemed, consider carefully the words I'm about to speak to you and stand up for I have now been sent to you. And when he said this to me, I stood up trembling. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard and I have come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then, help me. then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns the time yet to come. We continue on with chapter 11, verses 40, and then straight through to chapter 12. At the time of the end, the king of the south will engage him in battle, and the king of the north will storm out against him with chariots and cavalry and a great fleet of ships. He will invade many countries and sweep through them like a flood. He will also invade the beautiful land. Many countries will fall, but Edom, Moab, and the leaders of Ammon will be delivered from his hand. He will extend his power over many countries. Egypt will not escape. He will gain control of the treasures of gold and silver and all the riches of Egypt with the Libyans and Cushites in submission. But reports from the east and the north will alarm him, and he will set out in a great rage to destroy and annihilate many. He will pitch his royal tents between the seas at the beautiful holy mountain. Yet he will come to his end, and no one will help him. At that time, Michael, the great prince, who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scroll until the time of the end. Many will go here and there to increase knowledge. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there before me saw two others, one on this bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. One of them said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long will it be before this astonishing things are fulfilled? The man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, lifted his right hand and his left hand toward heaven 
And I heard him swear by him who lives forever, saying, It will be for a time, times, and half a time, when the power of the holy people has been finally broken, all these things will be completed. I heard, but I did not understand. So I asked, my Lord, what will be the outcome of all of this be? He replied, go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. From the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1,335 days. As for you, go your way to the end. You will rest, and at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. This is the word of the Lord. All make sense? Maybe because we didn't read all of it. Um, Or did you see or did you hear uh, what is said about the wise? Then chapter 12, uh, verse 3, uh, it says, Those uh, who are wise uh, will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The brightness of the heavens or the skies above and the sun Uh, in all its glory. Uh, The picture at the end uh, is a a glorious picture of being raised to everlasting life uh, and then shining bright. Uh, That is what lies ahead uh, for the wise uh, and those who lead many to Christ, many to righteousness. Uh, The end is good. Uh, This this is the end uh, that Daniel is left with uh, and the the book of Daniel uh, leaves us with. Uh, resurrection hope, uh, that, that is what we have. Uh, it is ours uh, in the Lord Jesus. Uh, so if you have Christ, uh, this hope uh, is yours. If you are wise and have Christ. Uh, so let me ask, do you have Christ? Because um, that, that, is, that is wise. Because then you're part of this, this glorious picture. Let me try and, and paint a bit of a picture of chapters 10 uh, to 12. Uh, it's apocalyptic language, uh, which, which I don't find easy, and uh, the scholars say these chapters are, are hard. Uh, a few tips in reading apocalyptic language, uh, courtesy of our own Phil Sindon. Uh, so three, three tips, which are uh, to focus on the main point, uh, observe the detail, uh, but don't get caught up in it, uh, and feel the emotion. So we'll try to do that. Uh, over the next few minutes. Uh, And remember as well what it is that apocalyptic language focuses on. Uh, Three things. Uh, The unseen world, uh, difficulty for God's people, and the end. And this is very much what we have in these chapters. And it it pretty much falls out exactly that. Chapters 10, 11, and 12. From the unseen world, the difficulty for God's people, and then the end. Uh, Thinking about the visions that started back in chapter 7, they are uh, a prophecy about the future uh, with the purpose of encouraging God's people to remain faithful in difficult difficult times. That is the the big aim, the big purpose of of all, all the visions. Remain faithful. Remain faithful because God is in control. God is sovereign over us. Uh, As we sang before, uh, God will have his way in the end. Uh, There will be an end to the trouble, and then uh, God's justice will be seen. There will be judgment 
and there will be deliverance uh, as well. Uh, this, that is to come, and so this gives us reassurance uh, and also hope. Uh, so we can remain faithful. And all of that is on view in these chapters as well, 10, 11, and 12. Uh, that is really the, the big picture of these chapters. So uh, stand back, if you will, and try to, try to see this as, as a painting, one, one whole painting. Um, and you're going to have to imagine it for yourselves. So difficult times. These are the, the broad brushstrokes, if you like, that we have here. Um, they depict the, the difficult uh, times. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking a, an abstract painting is what I have in my mind, where the, the colours are dark and you've got um, broad brushstrokes, which are quite harsh, um, but they end. They come to a point where they end, so they don't take up the whole canvas. Uh, there, there is light. Uh, at the, the top right-hand corner, uh, there, there is light which is coming in. Dark tones don't take over the whole painting. Uh, the eye is led to this, this beautiful uh, light. And so the picture for God's people is that despite the, the trouble, the dark times, there is light ahead. And that is to give them, to give us uh, confidence to keep uh, going, knowing that there is a, a deliverance, there is this hope that is to come and it is going to be wonderful uh, and everlasting. The wise are those who remain faithful uh, right to the end. Uh, the wise are those who live uh, in the everyday with that everlasting reality uh, in view. Uh, so I want to show you just a little picture um, for each of the chapters. So maybe think of this, you know those paintings where you might have like three canvases or panels that make up the whole? Um, think about it like that for these chapters. So the picture that I want you to see from chapter 10 uh, is the unseen world. Uh, if you're wise, uh, you'll live every day knowing that there is an, an unseen world at play, an unseen world uh, with, with unseen powers. Uh, verse 1 of chapter 10 tells us that Daniel, uh, this, this revelation that he receives concerns a great war. And then in verse 14, it tells us what will happen to the people in the future. Uh, but the messenger, uh, perhaps it's Gabriel, uh, has not been able to come. Verse 13 says he's been resisted or held back by the prince of Persia for 21 days. So for the same amount of time that Daniel has been mourning and fasting, uh, the messenger has been restrained from being able to come and give uh, the, the vision. So it seems here there, there is a battle going on in the spiritual realms. Now, this is the, the unseen world of, of spiritual forces, uh, where the, the angels are messengers, uh, evil powers, evil spirits. Uh, this, this is a world that um, many of us do not know about, um, but many here will. And so for me, uh, and for, for many, if it's not tangible, if we can't see it, then it's sort of out of our experience and thinking. Um, but as you know, recently I was in India and speaking to the village pastors there. For them, very real, very aware of the, these powers that are at play. And I know many here, particularly those from uh, Africa and parts of Asia, um, very, very real, uh, these spiritual uh, forces. The unseen world is real, might be hidden, but it is still real. Um, we're familiar with it, like the Apostle Paul speaks about it. Uh, Ephesians 6, uh, there uh, he speaks of the devil and says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil in the spiritual, the heavenly realms. And so, as the Apostle Paul goes on, the wise person is the one who puts on the armour of God. Uh, the wise person is the one who stands firm and remains faithful. 
Uh, the wise person is the one who, who lives every day knowing the reality of this spiritual battle that is at work. One of the things we're called to uh, in Ephesians 6 is uh, to, to pray. One of the greatest weapons that we have in the spiritual battle is prayer. Uh, when uh, the Apostle Paul calls uh, the Ephesians and us to pray uh, in the Spirit, uh, maybe that's because in this uh, spiritual battle, uh, we have the Spirit and we have His power. So we come to God in independence of Him uh, in the Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. We pray uh, in, in the Spirit. I wonder uh, what this has looked like for you this week. Right, The wise person will, will pray and let, let God take, take, take care of things. Uh, if someone was to, to have a look at all the things that you have prayed for this week, uh, what might that reveal to them about you? If they were to look at the things that you've prayed about uh, this week, would it, would it tell them that you are making the most of this weapon that God has given us? Prayer. He equips us in the spiritual battle and he calls us uh, to pray. Uh, I know there are a few here who get up uh, very early in the morning uh, to pray. Uh, and I would say that is wise. Uh, that these people, uh, they, they get it. The unseen world uh, and the power of prayer. Uh, God has given it to us. Uh, so I encourage you um, to pray, uh, knowing the power of God and that he gives us. Well, if we move uh, from that first panel um, to the, to the centre uh, canvas, uh, the picture that we see here is uh, the earthly battle. If chapter 10 uh, was the unseen world, then chapter 11 uh, is the earthly one. Chapter 11, uh, it is, it's quite long and complex, um, both the chapter uh, and the battle. Uh, there's a lot of detail uh, there. But it seems to be concerning the predictions uh, of, a, of a political struggle uh, for power uh, within the Greek Empire following uh, Alexander uh, the Great. I uh, remember the, the goat, um, Alexander the Great, the goat uh, from um, the earlier chapter, chapter 8 that we looked at. So if you read it, we just picked up on the last few verses of chapter 11, you notice there that there is this battle going on, um, the king of the north and the king of uh, the south. Uh, the king of the north uh, is uh, uh, Seleucus, uh, Syria and all that region. Uh, and then the king of the south uh, is Ptolemy, uh, Egypt. And who is in the middle? Israel, see there, right in the middle. So Israel are uh, in uh, the hot spot. Israel is, is feeling the full force of this battle that is going on between the king of the north and the king of the south. Uh, read chapter 11, it's also there in, in 12. We have the words, of the, the abomination that causes desolation uh, there in 31, uh, which keeps coming up in Daniel, uh, doesn't it? We've spoken about it before. Uh, could be taken to be Antiochus, um, what he does uh, to God's people, the terrible things he does to them, uh, where they're no longer allowed to, to make their sacrifices uh, and instead he gets them doing the deplorable things uh, with pigs and sets up Zeus uh, as a statue in, in their temple. So what we have here in this, this earthly battle, in many ways, is just a pattern of what we can expect to come uh, for, for the time after this uh, as well. And all the Antiochuses or Antichrists uh, who would follow and set themselves up against uh, God and we continue to see this uh, today. Um, we can pray for peace, and we did, and that's a good thing to pray for peace. Um, but at the same time, we shouldn't be surprised that these earthly battles uh, continue. Uh, chapter 11 speaks time after time as well about this appointed time. Uh, three times it says 
Uh, in God's appointed time, they come to an end. So these earthly kings um, will come to an end, and we know that in that um, it happens time after time that uh, a king will defeat a king, then there'll be a, another one, and that just happens time after time. But the time will come when they will all they will all end. So the wise will trust God, knowing that the the end will come, that God will have his way. Uh, Justice will be done. Uh, There will be judgment. Uh, God will deliver his people. And so these battles will keep going on. Um, So we, we shouldn't be surprised by that. But we can be assured that they will end and there will be deliverance. Now, doesn't necessarily make it easier for people who are caught up uh, in these battles. And I guess uh, here we, we are so protected uh, from, from this, but there are so many uh, nations in the world where this is just constantly happening uh, for them, all around them, and they're, they're stuck uh, in the middle. Uh, or for those people who, who are being persecuted for their faith in Jesus. And we heard from Gabe from Open Doors just a few weeks ago and how that is just increasing more and more. But there is some hope here in that it ends. But then the third panel uh, gives us a much fuller uh, picture of of hope. In the third panel, uh, here we have the glorious picture uh, of what is to come Uh, The deliverance for all those whose name is written in the book. So when you you hear those words, what comes to mind? Uh, For me, I think right at the end in Revelation, Revelation 21, uh, it speaks there about all of those whose name is written in the Lamb's book of life. uh, And they will will be part of the new creation, the everlasting life. Uh, Jesus also spoke. Uh, to his disciples about your names written in heaven. Uh, Daniel, uh, likewise, are here. Uh, And this is where we're we're now moving into the the everlasting reality. So we have the the unseen world and the the evil there, uh, the earthly battle. But then in the third one, uh, it is the the everlasting realities, where the distress and death of this world Uh, is not the end, uh, or the death and distress of this world uh, comes to an end, and then we are lifted up to see uh, the everlasting realities that awaits us all. And so, yeah, this this verse, Daniel 12, uh, verse 2, where it says, "...multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt." Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Awaking from the dust of the earth. Uh, Unless Jesus returns first, we will all um, have our final breath here, and we'll be laid to rest, we'll be buried, or we'll be cremated. Uh, Thinking of of a cemetery... Um, the word cemetery, so c- cemetery is not just a burial ground. The word means uh, sleeping place. Uh, in funeral services, we say um, the word earth to earth, uh, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Here in, in verse 2, it says that the multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. They will awake and rise from their sleeping place to everlasting life or everlasting contempt. So resurrection hope, uh, where death is not the end. Uh, This world is not all that there is. There is. There is more. There is everlasting life. Uh, Philippians 3 gives us uh, this, this wonderful picture uh, of the future. Uh, the Apostle Paul there, he says, uh, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, 
who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. This is our hope, our resurrection hope. Uh, and the wise, the wise will shine bright. Uh, and those who have led others uh, to Christ will shine bright. So are you wise? Uh, is it everlasting life for you? Uh, do you have that certainty that you know this is what you have? Because you have Christ. Uh, and Christ is, is our, our wisdom. So if you have Christ, you have this. If you've turned to Christ, the, the light, the hope of Jesus uh, is yours. And you're, you're shining uh, his light now. Uh, the others might come to see the light and hope of Jesus as well. Uh, as David says la last week, this, this is what we want for us as a church. Uh, we, we look at this ever-growing part of, of northwest Sydney, uh, and we want to see the light and hope of Jesus uh, in, in every heart, in every home around us. Don't we want people to, to be rising to everlasting life? Uh, isn't that what you want? Uh, everyone here, people in our community, the ones you love, this is eternity. We want them rising to everlasting life, not everlasting contempt. We want the homes in our area to be full of the, the light and the hope of Jesus, where, where people, they know Jesus. Don't we want to see more and more people around us who are part of this with us, rising to everlasting life? Uh, this is our our everlasting reality, eternal reality. And so uh, we want to be wise. Uh, we want to know Christ so that we are rising to everlasting life. And hopefully you want that for the people around you as well. And to be wise is to live in the everyday with these everlasting realities in mind, so that they shape our decisions and how we go about our day-to-day -day life. Eternity is everlasting life, and there's everlasting contempt. And so, may you know Christ so you're part of everlasting life. If, if, you're, not, if you're not sure, let us know. If you've got questions, that's okay. We want, to make, we want you to have every opportunity to, to turn to Christ, to know the truth of Christ, so you're part of everlasting life, not everlasting contempt. Uh, practically, uh, if, if we believe this, if we believe this eternal reality, uh, what, what will it mean? Uh, it could be a whole host. Let me just give you three. Firstly, We'll pray, won't we? Won't we pray? Won't I pray for those people who I know, who I love, but at the moment they don't know Christ, and so it means they're heading to everlasting contempt. And I've got my, people in my family, and that's the case. Am I praying for them? Am I praying for their salvation? Whose salvation are you praying for? I don't know if you uh, received my weekly email, or if you read it. Um, I shared, why are you laughing? As you read. Um, shared in it this week, so the Archbishop of, of Sydney uh, shared his uh, five-day prayer plan. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give that a go uh, this week. Uh, how about you? Would that be something that will help you to pray? Well, secondly, uh, keep going. Keep holding fast to Christ. Like that will be wise, won't it? You know the glory to come. It means whatever trouble you might be facing now, you will keep going. You will remain faithful uh, so that you will be, you'll be there. You'll keep having eyes for the big picture. Today, tomorrow might be hard, 
But keep your eyes on the big picture, the eternal realities, to help you to keep going. Knowing that the God has got you, he will not let you fall. And then lastly, uh, shine bright now. Uh, we, we will shine bright then, that's what it says. Uh, but we, we can shine our light uh, now uh, as well. So this week, uh, the words that you speak with people, how you respond in different situations, uh, at, at work or wherever, wherever you might be, uh, may we display the fruit of the Spirit. May we shine the light of Jesus now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we uh, have seen here just a, a glimpse this morning uh, of some of the, the eternal realities uh, but also the, the unseen world and the, the spiritual battle that is going on. Uh, and we know that the, Satan, the devil, does not want us to know you, does not want us to worship you or to live your way. Uh, he wants us to, to make foolish decisions. Father, thank you for Christ. Thank you for everything you've revealed to us. Help us to, to remain faithful. Help us to keep seeking Christ. And Father, we pray, I pray for, for anyone in this room this morning uh, who does not know you, that they would turn to Christ, that we would be part of this everlasting life. And for our family, our friends, our neighbours, work colleagues, whoever it might be, we pray that you would have mercy and grace upon them, that they too will share in the eternal life and shine bright all for your glory. Amen.